with Royal Yacht Britannia passed through Tower Bridge, bringing home Her Majesty the Queen and her family. Thus ended a 50,000 mile tour of the Commonwealth by the Queen and Prince Philip. The Premier was at Westminster Pier as Her Majesty stepped onto English soil for the first time in nearly six months. The royal children, who had journeyed with their mother from Tobruk, joined in the family reunions. Huge crowds gathered before Buckingham Palace to voice their greetings to the royal couple. Great had been the triumph of the Queen's tour, and heartwarming was the welcome home. Early in the year, Billy Graham, the American evangelist, came to Britain with his wife. During his Greater London Crusade, which Pack Haringey for three months, 36,000 people declared themselves converts. It's been a long time since evangelism and revival and Christ and God was front page news around the world. And we thank God for it. Then first pictures were released of the 1952 hydrogen bomb explosion. The fireball, three miles across, was the largest ever produced. Then came the shockwave. Thus the world entered the hydrogen age with a weapon of war. But Sir William Penny and a team of British scientists were probing the secrets of atomic power to aid the peaceful pursuits of mankind. In atomic factories throughout Britain, they worked to serve the needs of medicine and to harness the power for the benefits of the world. The year's grand national winner was Royal Tan, the second successive victory for jockey Brian Marshall, owner Joe Griffin, and trainer Vincent O'Brien. Dai Dower entered the professional boxing field on his 21st birthday and quickly punched his way to fame. On the football field, West Bromwich Albion met Preston North End in the cup final. Here's Griffin banging home the goal that gave West Brom a 3-2 victory in the last few minutes of a great match. Although West Brom didn't pull off the double, football's most coveted trophy was theirs. Later in the year, sports fans again hailed Maureen Connolly as Wimbledon's women's champion. The men's final brought Egypt's Yaroslav Drobny against Australia's Ken Rosewall. Mrs. Drobny saw her husband serve for match point. Victory in his third final was within Drobny's grasp. There can have been few more popular Wimbledon wins. Eleven times Drobny had aimed at the title. At last he was rewarded. The sport of Queens saw Her Majesty finish the season as winning owner, but the derby was again to elude her. Carrying the royal colours, Landor still had a chance up the last stretch. Never say die, Darius and Arabian Knight led the field. Then Lester Piggott began his run on Never Say Die. Steadily he pulled further away. A tremendous finishing burst that won nearly 17,000 pounds for his American owner. Piggott was suspended later in the season for reckless riding, but returned as first jockey with Noel Murris, the job vacated by Sir Gordon Richards, who retired this year following an injury. The ex-champion has now become a trainer. In Vancouver, Prince Philip saw the epic duel between Landy and Bannister in the Empire Games mile final. John Landy led most of the way, but on the last bend, Bannister began to pose on him. A hundred yards to go. Bannister, who has since announced his retirement from the track, clocked three minutes, 58.8 seconds. A magnificent win for the Miracle Miler. Then came the marathon, and Jim Peters, almost unconscious on his feet, stumbled into the stadium first. 26 miles under a dazzling sun had taken its toll. No one dared help him, for he would have been disqualified instantly. By a cruel twist of fate, he collapsed on what he thought to be the finishing line. It was, in fact, many yards from it. Then, 15 minutes behind Peters, a rival, Joe McGee, came in to win for Scotland. 1954 again saw immense strides in aviation, though the Bristol Britannia, Britain's 800,000-pound turbojet, suffered a setback when a prototype skidded across the mud of the River Severn on a crash landing. Bill Pegg's brilliant piloting averted any loss of life. In January, tragedy struck the comet, Britain's record-breaking jet airliner. 35 lives were lost when Yoke Peter crashed soon after takeoff from Rome. Nearly 80% of the wreckage was salvaged and pieced together in an effort to find the cause of the crash. Meanwhile, another comet was tested to destruction in a water tank at Farnborough. Soon, it is hoped, the comets will again fly the air routes of the world. Another British aircraft, the Vickers Viscount, was a bestseller overseas this year. Sir Anthony Eden became a Knight of the Garter for his services to Britain. 
This was a hectic year for him, for soon after the successful outcome of the Indochina peace meetings, he steered the nine power talks to their conclusion. Negotiations with Monsieur Mandes France, the French Premier and other ministers, ended with the signing of an agreement that granted full sovereignty to Germany and gave her permission to rearm. Dr. Adenauer signed for Germany. This was undoubtedly the most important political event of the year. Another foreign meeting took place at the White City when the Russian Kutz fought a 5,000 meters duel with Britain's Chris Chataway. Kutz, who smashed his own three-mile record on the way round, stayed in front, but Chataway was never more than a couple of feet behind, waiting for exactly the right moment to challenge. And Chataway had smashed the world record. Later, Kutz was to break it again, but this was Chataway's moment, shared by his friend Roger Bannister. In November, the royal children provided some of the most delightful pictures of the year when, with their parents, they went to Waterloo Station to welcome the Queen Mother home from a visit to America and Canada. The Queen Mother had spent about five weeks on the other side of the Atlantic and in that time had enchanted millions with her warm sincerity and charm. The following month came the clash of the soccer season with Stanley Matthews bewildering the German defence as time after time he led England into the attack. Matthews centred and Bentley headed it home. 3-1 was the final score. A great victory for England, but for Matthews it must rank as one of the most glorious games of his career. In Westminster Hall, Sir Winston Churchill was honoured as had been no statesman before him when he celebrated his 80th birthday. Mr. Attlee presented a gift from his fellow politicians. On behalf of both Houses of Parliament, Prime Minister, I ask you to accept this portrait. The portrait of Sir Winston, painted by Graham Sutherland, caused one of the biggest controversies of the year. The Premier, who is, of course, a fine amateur painter himself, had this to say about it in his speech of thanks. The portrait is a remarkable example of modern art. <laughs> the portrait was but one of many thousands of gifts presented to Sir Winston on this historic day. The people of Britain, who see the steadfast fighting qualities of the nation symbolized in his fabulous career, paid tribute to a great man in 1954. A year of high endeavor and progress, a year crowned with success for the people of Great Britain.